We shall need all our prayers. Now the end is coming. Undeniably, Gone with the Wind holds a significant place in cinematic history. Released in 1939, this epic historical romance took the world by storm, captivating audiences amidst the backdrop of the American Civil War and Reconstruction era. Victor Fleming's masterpiece showcased unforgettable performances by Vivian Lee as Scarlett O'Hara and Clark Gable as Rhett Butler, along with Olivia de Havilland and Leslie Howard in supporting roles. The movie's impact reached far beyond entertainment. It influenced the world's perception of American history, revolutionized storytelling and film, and raised the bar for cinematic quality. As a result, Hollywood's reputation as the film capital of the world was solidified, with its engaging narrative, innovative technical achievements, and powerful performances, Gone with the Wind secured its spot as one of the all-time great films. However, even this classic is not without its peculiarities and mistakes, which have remained concealed beneath its grandeur. As we delve deeper into the film, we uncover surprising revelations about this cinematic legend. Prepare to discover a different side to the movie you thought you knew so well. What unexpected secrets lie hidden within this classic? Let's find out. The opening scene of this classic, Gone with the Wind, showcases a majestic oak tree standing proudly outside Tara's entrance, symbolizing the grandeur and stability of the Old South. However, its conspicuous absence after the Yankee invasion leaves the audience slightly puzzled. The tree, which once provided shade and shelter, seems to have vanished, much like the way of life that the characters once knew. The vanishing oak tree serves as a powerful metaphor for the upheaval and destruction caused by the Civil War. The tree's absence is felt throughout the movie as the characters grapple with the loss of their homes, their way of life, and their loved ones. The audience can't help but wonder what happened to the tree and why it was cut down. As the movie progresses, the audience is taken on a journey through the war and its aftermath. The characters face numerous challenges and hardships, but they also find moments of joy and hope. Through it all, the memory of the oak tree lingers, serving as a reminder of what once was and what could be again. Towards the end of the war, the oak tree miraculously reappears in all its glory. Its resurgence is a symbol of rebirth and renewal as the characters begin to rebuild their lives and create a new future. The tree's return is a powerful moment in the movie, one that leaves the audience feeling hopeful and inspired. In the end, the vanishing oak tree in Gone with the Wind is more than just a prop. It's a powerful symbol of the resilience and strength of the human spirit, and a reminder that even in the face of great adversity, there is always hope for a brighter future. Long roads of the old days, Humber's calling. Oh, the lazy days. As filming for Gone with the Wind got underway, producer David Selznick still hadn't found his scarlet. It wasn't until the colossal burning of Atlanta scene was being shot that Vivian Lee, whom Selznick had been introduced to through his brother, joined him on the director's platform. This encounter eventually led to her legendary screen test. The uncertainty surrounding Scarlett's casting was a significant concern for Selznick. He had already delayed the production for months, hoping to find the perfect actress to bring Margaret Mitchell's iconic character to life. Despite the progress being made on set, the film's central role remained vacant. Enter Vivian Lee, a relatively unknown British actress at the time. Selznick's brother, Myron, had been impressed by Lee's performance in a London production of The Mask of Virtue and suggested she be considered for the part. After much persuasion, Selznick agreed to meet with her, and the two watched some of her previous work together. Despite being underwhelmed by her earlier performances, Selznick saw something special in Lee and invited her to perform a screen test. It wasn't until the burning of Atlanta scene, however, that Selznick truly saw Lee's potential. As she stood beside him on the director's platform, watching the flames consume the set, Selznick recognized that she embodied the strength and determination of Scarlett O'Hara. Lee's screen test only confirmed Selznick's suspicions. Her performance was electric, and she brought an intensity and passion to the role that had yet to be seen. Selznick knew he had found his Scarlett, and the rest, as they say, is history. From that moment on, Lee became synonymous with Scarlett O'Hara, and her performance in Gone with the Wind remains one of the most iconic in Hollywood history. It's hard to imagine anyone else playing the part, and Lee's contribution to the film cannot be overstated. All the news of Miss Sue Allen. In the intimate scene before Rhett Butler 
played by Clark Gable, enlists in the Confederate Army in Gone with the Wind, he and Scarlett O'Hara, portrayed by Vivian Lee, share a goodbye kiss. As they part, Rhett casually drops his hat on the ground. However, in the next shot, the hat is seen perched atop a fence post. This sudden and inexplicable teleportation of Rhett's hat has left audiences questioning the logic of this classic film. The scene takes place in the front yard of the Terra Plantation, Scarlett's family home. The two characters stand close, Rhett holding Scarlett's hands as they exchange their final words before Rhett's departure. As they lean in for a kiss, the brim of Rhett's hat shadows his face, adding a sense of mystery to the moment. When they pull away, Rhett releases Scarlett's hands and, in a careless gesture, lets his hat fall to the ground. The camera then cuts to a wide shot of the yard, showing Scarlett and Rhett from a distance. However, Rhett's hat is no longer on the ground. Instead, it sits neatly on the top rail of a fence post, several feet away. The sudden appearance of the hat on the fence post is never explained, and leaves viewers scratching their heads. Throughout the movie, Rhett is often seen wearing his hat, a symbol of his rugged and carefree personality. The hat is an essential prop in this scene, emphasizing Rhett's nonchalant attitude towards his enlistment and his relationship with Scarlett. Its sudden teleportation, therefore, is a puzzling detail that stands out in an otherwise realistic and historically accurate film. Despite this peculiar moment, Gone with the Wind remains a beloved classic, renowned for its epic storytelling, memorable characters, and stunning cinematography. The film's portrayal of the antebellum South and the Civil War has left a lasting impact on American culture and continues to captivate audiences to this day. However, the mystery of Rhett's teleporting hat remains an intriguing footnote in the movie's long and storied history. In the making of Gone with the Wind, English actress Vivian Lee initially struggled to secure the role of Scarlett O'Hara. Despite her success on the London stage, her unmistakable English accent almost cost her the part during her first reading. The film's director, George Cukor, took an unconventional approach to help Lee embrace the Southern Belle persona. In a surprising turn of events, Cukor gave Lee a sharp strike on the face, which startled her and set her back on track. This unexpected action sparked a lasting friendship between the director and the actress. Cukor's unique method helped Lee tap into the character's fiery spirit and effectively portray Scarlett's complex personality. The transformation was so remarkable that Lee's performance became one of the most memorable aspects of this classic film. No, I don't think I will kiss you. Although you need kissing badly. That's what's wrong with you. You should be kissed and often. In the Virginia Reel lineup scene of this classic, Gone with the Wind, an unusual mix-up occurs. At first, Scarlett stands beside a lady wearing a blue dress, but in a matter of seconds, she's seen next to a woman in a light orange dress. The lady who was previously in blue has now been moved further down the line. This unexpected switch adds a touch of humor to the film, breaking the tension in an otherwise dramatic scene. It's a small detail that highlights the attention to detail in the movie, making it even more enjoyable for viewers. The Virginia Reel scene is just one of many memorable moments in this enduring film, which has captivated audiences for generations. Say you're going to marry me. Say yes. Say yes. <laughs> the United Daughters of the Confederacy from Ocala, Florida, were not pleased when they heard that a British actress would be playing the iconic Southern character, Scarlett O'Hara, in the upcoming movie Gone with the Wind. They strongly believed that only a Southern actress could accurately portray the character's spirit and determination. Their protest, however, was quickly silenced when the suggestion of Katherine Hepburn, a Yankee, taking up the role instead was brought up. This only further fueled their discontent, and they continued to voice their opinions against the casting choice. Despite the controversy, the movie went on to become a classic, with the British actress giving a memorable performance as Scarlett O'Hara. The film's portrayal of the antebellum South and the Civil War era has been both praised and criticized over the years, but there is no denying its impact on popular culture and the enduring legacy it has left behind. The character of Scarlett O'Hara, in particular, has resonated with audiences and has become an iconic figure in the world of cinema. The movie's exploration of her strength, resilience, and determination in the face of adversity has captivated viewers and left a lasting impression. In the end, the casting of a British actress as Scarlett O'Hara did not detract from the movie's success and has instead become a fascinating footnote in the history of this classic film. It's good money even if it is mine. 
I'm sure you're very generous. No, I'm not. I'm a confederate like everybody else, that's all. The 1939 movie Gone with the Wind holds a special place in the history of cinema, not just for its epic storytelling and grandeur, but also for the fascinating process behind the casting of its leading characters. In particular, the Parade of Scarlets and the unconventional portrayal of Rhett Butler offer a captivating glimpse into the film's production. Archival footage from the screen test reveals a diverse array of actresses, each bringing a unique interpretation to the role of Scarlett O'Hara. As they profess their love for Ashley Wilkes in the library scene, these aspiring Scarlets showcase their talent and versatility, providing a fascinating study of how different performers can shape a character. Meanwhile, Red Butler, as described by Margaret Mitchell in her memoir, was initially envisioned as a darker and more nefarious character compared to Clark Gable's eventual portrayal. Overwhelmed by the press and the public since selling the film rights to her novel, Mitchell humorously suggested that comedian Groucho Marx, or even Donald Duck, better represented Rhett's qualities. This anecdote highlights the author's amusement and slight disconnect from the larger-than-life adaptation of her work. In essence, the Parade of Scarlets and Mitchell's unconventional vision of Rhett Butler offer a captivating look into the production of this classic film. The various interpretations of Scarlet and the author's playful suggestions for Rhett serve as a reminder of the creative journey that brought Gone with the Wind to the silver screen. Get out. I'll think about that tomorrow. And we want all your waltzes. First Brent, then me, then Brent, then me again, and so on. Promise? Gone with the Wind is a classic film that saw the involvement of three directors during its production. George Cukor was the original director, but he was replaced 18 days into shooting due to disagreements with the producer over filming pace and level of detail. Victor Fleming then took over as director, but he later had to take a break due to exhaustion. During Fleming's absence, Sam Wood stepped in to continue filming. The final film was a result of the contributions of all three directors. Despite the changes in leadership, the movie remained a cohesive and captivating story. The film's success can be attributed to the combined efforts of Cukor, Fleming, and Wood, who each brought their own unique skills and vision to the project. Cukor was known for his attention to detail and ability to work well with actors. Fleming, on the other hand, was known for his technical expertise and ability to handle large-scale productions. Wood was a reliable director who was able to step in and keep the production running smoothly during a difficult time. The final product was a testament to the hard work and dedication of all involved. Gone with the Wind remains a beloved classic, and its legacy can be traced back to the collaborative efforts of its three directors. Despite the challenges they faced, they were able to create a film that continues to resonate with audiences today. He was old enough to act like lady. Who cares? Tucked away for decades, a remarkable discovery was made when the Bruce Moore Mansion was turned over to the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Hidden within its walls lay a treasure trove of behind-the-scenes footage from the filming of the iconic barbecue scene in Gone with the Wind. This fascinating find offers a unique glimpse into the making of this classic film. The footage was shot by Howard Hall, a business tycoon and film enthusiast, who had the foresight to capture candid moments during the filming of the barbecue scene. This scene, known for its lively atmosphere and large crowd, was a significant challenge to film during that era. Hall's footage, therefore, holds immense value as it showcases the intricate process of bringing such a complex scene to life. The behind-the-scenes footage reveals the cast and crew members diligently working to create this memorable sequence. It captures the camaraderie among the actors, the meticulous attention to detail by the filmmakers, and the sheer scale of the production. The footage also highlights the challenges faced by the crew, such as coordinating hundreds of extras and managing the logistics of filming outdoors. Despite the passage of time, the discovered footage remains a testament to the enduring legacy of Gone with the Wind. It serves as a captivating reminder of the film's production and the remarkable efforts of those involved. This discovery allows us to step back in time and appreciate the intricate workings of a classic Hollywood production. He just wow when he wouldn't let them fight on kind of broken knees. And he had fits when they took all us feet and to dig the ditch for the wife so it's hot. Leslie Howard, the actor who portrayed Ashley Wilkes in Gone with the Wind, had a strong dislike for his role. After playing several weak characters, Howard found it difficult to embrace the young and attractive persona of Ashley. His discontent even extended to the film itself, which he dismissively referred to as a terrible lot of nonsense. 
Howard's reluctance to play Ashley Wilkes was rooted in his frustration with the limited range of roles offered to him. He had grown tired of being typecast as the weak and ineffectual character and longed for more challenging and dynamic parts. Despite his reservations, Howard ultimately agreed to take on the role of Ashley, but his dissatisfaction was palpable throughout the filming process. Despite his misgivings, Howard's portrayal of Ashley Wilkes was widely praised by audiences and critics alike. His understated and nuanced performance brought depth and complexity to a character that might otherwise have been overshadowed by the more flamboyant and dynamic personalities in the film. In the end, Leslie Howard's reluctant portrayal of Ashley Wilkes became one of the defining moments of his career. Despite his initial reservations, he brought a quiet strength and dignity to the role and helped to create a character that has endured as one of the most memorable and enduring in the history of American cinema. Through his portrayal of Ashley Wilkes, Leslie Howard demonstrated the power of even the most reluctant performer to leave a lasting mark on the world of film. His contribution to this classic movie serves as a reminder of the importance of taking risks and embracing new challenges, even when they may seem daunting or unappealing at first. As Scarlet and Rhett make their escape from the burning city of Atlanta in Gone with the Wind, the film intersperses scenes of wounded soldiers marching, creating a stark contrast to the couple's hasty departure. These soldiers, burdened by their injuries and the weight of war, paint a grim picture of the harsh realities of the Civil War. An intriguing inconsistency is noticed among these soldiers, particularly with a bearded man who is first seen assisting a fallen comrade. However, in the following scene, this same man is handling a rifle instead, only to be seen once again carrying the fallen soldier. This shift in duties raises questions about the soldier's ability to perform his duties and the overall state of the Confederate Army. The man's shifting burden highlights the desperate situation the Confederate soldiers find themselves in as they are forced to take on multiple roles and responsibilities due to the high number of casualties and injuries. This also sheds light on the harsh realities of war and the sacrifices made by soldiers who often put their own needs and well-being aside to help their comrades. In conclusion, the interspersed scenes of wounded soldiers and the bearded man's shifting burden serve as a stark reminder of the harsh realities of war and the sacrifices made by soldiers, even as Scarlet and Rhett make their escape from the war-torn city of Atlanta. Will you be an angel? I do need you to help me receive my guests. The creation of the 1939 film Gone with the Wind is a tale of its own, particularly the dramatic script writing ordeal that ensued. The process of transforming Margaret Mitchell's dense novel into a compelling screenplay proved to be chaotic and hilariously challenging. It was such a spectacle that it even inspired a stage comedy, Moonlight and Magnolias, which dramatized the ordeal. The film's producer, David Oselznik, had enlisted the help of director Victor Fleming and script Dr. Ben Hecht to work on the screenplay. In a bid to meet the deadline, the three men were locked in an office for an entire week, subsisting on nothing but bananas and peanuts. This intense session resulted in Selznick collapsing from exhaustion and Fleming bursting a blood vessel in his eye. The chaotic process of writing the script for this classic film is a testament to the challenges that come with adapting a beloved novel for the big screen. Despite the ordeal, the final product was a cinematic masterpiece that has endured for generations. The dramatic script writing experience is a fascinating behind the scenes. Look at the making of this timeless film. Lie down in green pastures. In, in the movie Gone with the Wind, a peculiar continuity error can be observed just before Dr. Mead announces the arrival of Rhett Butler at the bazaar. As Dr. Mead stands on the platform, making the introduction, keen-eyed viewers may notice that both Rhett and Scarlett are already present in the background moving away from the platform. This goof is a curious anomaly, given that the narrative has not yet introduced Rhett to the audience. The film's continuity team appears to have overlooked this detail, allowing the characters to appear prematurely. Despite this minor oversight, the film remains a classic, captivating audiences with its sweeping romance and epic storytelling. The unexpected appearance of Rhett and Scarlett only adds to the film's charm, serving as a reminder of the many intricacies and nuances that make this movie a timeless masterpiece. The scene is a fleeting moment, but it is a testament to the film's enduring appeal, and the many layers that continue to captivate viewers, 
even after all these years. Not worth three hundred dollars. You'll never mean anything but misery to any man. As Scarlett O'Hara, the headstrong protagonist of Gone with the Wind, flees from her morbid duty at the hospital, she makes her way towards a seemingly ordinary door. In her haste, she initially closes it behind her, only for a wider shot to reveal that the door is now inexplicably open. This strange occurrence is further emphasized through subsequent close-ups, which show the door to be closed once again. The enigmatic nature of this event is never fully explained within the movie, leaving audiences to ponder the possibilities behind this oscillating door. Was it merely a production oversight, or could it have been an intentional choice by the filmmakers to add a touch of mystery to the scene? Regardless of its intended meaning, this peculiar moment serves as a brief respite from the heavy themes present throughout the film. As Scarlett escapes the confines of the hospital, she is momentarily freed from the harsh realities of war and loss. The open door represents a gateway to a world beyond her immediate surroundings, offering a glimmer of hope amidst the chaos. This classic film is filled with such intriguing moments, each contributing to its enduring legacy. The oscillating door at the hospital is just one example of the many captivating elements that make Gone with the Wind a timeless piece of cinematic history. Even today, it continues to resonate with audiences, inviting new generations to step into its world and experience the story of Scarlett O'Hara and the Old South. As the barbecue scene unfolds in Gone with the Wind, a curious incident occurs with Scarlett's accessories. Earlier, she was seen wearing a coral necklace, but suddenly, it seems to have disappeared. This vanishing act happens so swiftly that it's easy to miss. It's as if the necklace has disappeared into thin air, leaving viewers to wonder about its whereabouts. Meanwhile, Scarlett's hoop skirt also presents a puzzle. She rushes out of her bedroom in a hurry, and the cord on her hoop appears untied. Yet, moments before, Mammy had carefully fastened it. This sudden loosening of the cord adds to the mystery surrounding Scarlett's accessories. These disappearing accessories could be seen as a metaphor for the chaotic and unpredictable world that Scarlett inhabits. Just like the missing necklace and the untied cord, things in Scarlett's life often seem to slip out of her control. The carefree and idyllic atmosphere of the barbecue is thus disrupted by these small yet significant details. In conclusion, the disappearing accessories in Gone with the Wind serve as a reminder of the unpredictable nature of life, even in the midst of seemingly carefree moments. They also highlight the chaotic world that Scarlet must navigate, where things are often beyond her control. Sister. Another sister? This is a jail, not a harem, Captain Butler. No, Major, she ain't one of those. As the movie, Gone with the Wind, unfolds, a seemingly insignificant detail catches the eye. In the porch scene where Scarlett converses with the Tarleton twins, a forgotten pillow mysteriously disappears. As Scarlett hastily leaves to meet her father, the pillow on which she was sitting is nowhere to be found. This classic film, set in the American South during the Civil War, is filled with dramatic moments and unforgettable characters. However, this small detail adds a touch of realism to the scene, making it relatable and memorable. Throughout the movie, the audience witnesses Scarlett's transformation from a headstrong, a naive young woman to a shrewd and cunning survivor. The absent pillow scene is just one of many moments that reveal Scarlett's true character. As the story progresses, Scarlett faces numerous challenges, including the loss of her home, the death of her first love, and the destruction of her way of life. Yet, she remains determined to survive and rebuild. The absent pillow scene is a subtle reminder that even in the midst of chaos and turmoil, everyday objects and moments can still have meaning. It is a small detail that adds depth and nuance to the character of Scarlet and the world of Gone with the Wind. In the end, the missing pillow is never mentioned again, but its absence lingers in the minds of the audience. It is a testament to the power of subtle storytelling and the enduring legacy of this classic film. Has she, has she asked for me? As Scarlet O'Hara flees from the burning city of Atlanta in Gone with the Wind, she is seen without a bonnet a crucial accessory for any proper southern lady. However, in the very next scene, as she and Rhett Butler ride through the chaotic train depot, Scarlett is suddenly wearing a black bonnet. This sudden appearance of the bonnet raises questions about its origin and purpose. Scarlett's bonnet is a simple yet elegant piece, with a black ribbon that ties neatly under her chin. It provides a stark contrast to the chaos and destruction around her, symbolizing her determination to maintain her dignity 
and composure in the face of adversity. Yet, just as suddenly as it appears, the bonnet disappears in the following scene, as Scarlet and Rhett continue their journey to Terra. Its sudden absence is never explained, leaving viewers to wonder about its fate. The mystery of Scarlet's bonnet adds a layer of intrigue to the character's journey in the movie. It highlights Scarlet's resourcefulness and resilience as she navigates the challenges of war and reconstruction. The bonnet also serves as a symbol of the changing times, as Scarlet adapts to the new reality of the post-war South. Its disappearance may represent Scarlet's shedding of her old identity and her embrace of a new one. Overall, the mystery of Scarlet's bonnet adds depth to the character and the story, making Gone with the Wind an enduring classic. As the camera pans to the grand staircase of Twelve Oaks in this classic film, Gone with the Wind, a curious occurrence takes place. Scarlett O'Hara, the leading lady, makes her entrance, and the guest's attention turns to her. However, in the background, Rhett Butler, a crucial character, can be spotted for a fleeting moment. In the very next shot, Rhett Butler mysteriously disappears. This inconsistency has left viewers wondering about the reason behind his sudden vanishing act. While some may argue that it was an editing mistake, others believe that it was a deliberate choice made by the filmmakers to add an element of surprise. Despite this inconsistency, Gone with the Wind remains a timeless piece of cinema, capturing the hearts of audiences for generations. The movie's enduring popularity is a testament to its compelling storyline, unforgettable characters, and stunning cinematography. As the story unfolds, viewers are transported to the antebellum South, where they witness the lives of the characters as they navigate love, loss, and the harsh realities of war. The film's portrayal of this era in history has left an indelible mark on popular culture, making it a classic that continues to resonate with audiences today. In conclusion, while the vanishing figures at Twelve Oaks may leave viewers scratching their heads, it does little to detract from the overall impact of this classic film. Gone with the Wind remains a timeless piece of cinema, captivating audiences with its compelling storyline, unforgettable characters, and stunning cinematography. In the movie Gone with the Wind, there's a scene where Scarlett O'Hara learns about Ashley Wilkes' marriage plans from the Tarleton Twins. This scene takes a magical turn when Scarlett, in despair, runs down the driveway, and the twins seem to have disappeared from the porch in the wider shot. The sudden disappearance of the Tarleton twins is quite puzzling and adds a touch of magic to the scene. The audience is left wondering if the twins had really vanished or if it was just a clever camera trick. The scene is shot in such a way that the twins are visible in the close-up shot. But when Scarlett runs down the driveway in the wider shot, they are nowhere to be seen. This magical disappearing act is a perfect example of how this classic film uses visual storytelling to convey emotions and advance the plot. The sudden disappearance of the twins highlights Scarlett's distress and adds to the dramatic tension of the scene. The movie Gone with the Wind is filled with such magical moments that leave a lasting impression on the audience. The film's ability to transport viewers to a different time and place is one of the reasons why it remains a beloved classic to this day. The scene with the Tarleton twins is just one of the many unforgettable moments in this iconic film. How is Ashley today, Scarlett? He didn't seem to be paying much attention to you. You mind your own business. <laughs> you Upon Scarlett's return to Terra and Gone with the Wind, she is met with a heart-wrenching sight her mother's body lying in the parlor. Ellen O'Hara has passed away due to typhoid, a highly contagious disease. Given the circumstances, one would expect a swift burial to prevent the spread of the illness. However, the film shows Ellen's body being displayed in the house for an extended period. This treatment of the dead body is questionable, considering the health risks involved. In reality, people who died from typhoid were quickly buried, sometimes within 24 hours of their death. The display of Ellen's body in the parlor could be seen as a way for the film to emphasize the gravity of her death and the impact it has on Scarlett. Nonetheless, it is a historical inaccuracy that raises questions about the afterlife treatment in the movie. In the world of Gone with the Wind, the display of Ellen's body may have been a way to pay respects to the deceased. However, in the context of the disease's contagious nature, it is crucial to consider the potential health risks involved. The decision to display the body in such a manner is a choice that the filmmakers made, and it is one that has been met with criticism from a historical perspective. 
Despite this inaccuracy, Gone with the Wind remains a classic film that continues to captivate audiences. The story of Scarlett and her struggles during the Civil War era is one that has resonated with viewers for generations. However, it is essential to recognize the film's historical inaccuracies and consider them in the context of the story being told. I never would have thought. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Darwin. You've taken a great load off. As the events of Gone with the Wind unfold, a few peculiar occurrences catch the eye. First, when Ashley Wilkes is about to return to the battlefront, Scarlett O'Hara greets him at the bottom of the stairs with his coat. However, in the following shots, the coat inexplicably disappears. This invisible coat leaves audiences wondering where it could have gone and who might have taken it. Later in the movie, another curious incident takes place. As Scarlett and Rhett Butler prepare to leave for Tara, Rhett reaches for his hat, which inexplicably appears on his head. The perplexing thing is that Scarlett, who is standing on the opposite side of the room holding a lamp, could not have helped him put it on. This unaided hat adds to the mystery and intrigue of the movie. These two instances of disappearing and appearing garments add a layer of intrigue to the movie, leaving audiences to ponder the unexplained. While the story of Gone with the Wind is primarily focused on Scarlett's romantic entanglements and her struggle to survive during the Civil War, these small details do not go unnoticed. They add a sense of wonder and curiosity to the movie, making it all the more engaging and memorable. As the camera pans over the Grand Mansion in Atlanta, Chrissy, Mammy, and Pork can't help but marvel at their newfound wealth. Chrissy, in particular, is ecstatic, commenting on the luxurious surroundings. However, after this scene, Chrissy never makes another appearance in the movie. It's a curious omission, as Prissy had been a significant character up until this point. Meanwhile, India and Sulan observe Scarlet's interactions with her suitors from a distance, standing in front of a large mirror that captures the staircase and landing. As Scarlet meets Frank Kennedy, the audience expects to see their reflections in the mirror. But in a strange twist, their figures don't appear in the mirror's reflection. It's a puzzling moment, and one that has left audiences wondering about the significance of this missing reflection. Some have speculated that the missing reflection is a metaphor for Scarlett's changing identity. As she becomes more independent and self-assured, she no longer needs the validation of others, including their reflections in the mirror. Others have suggested that it's a visual representation of Scarlett's increasing detachment from her past. As she moves forward in her life, she leaves behind her old self, and the missing reflection is a symbol of this separation. Whatever the reason, the missing reflection is a striking image that adds to the complexity of this classic film. It's just one of the many memorable moments that make Gone with the Wind such an enduring and beloved movie. At all horrible. It's only natural you want to look young. You'll be young when you are.